Keep yourself in the loop of everything football on the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. The latest news on and off the field, be it college football, Big Ten, SCC, Big 12, Pac-12, ACC, to the NFL. We've got you covered. Listen to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast. Everybody and welcome to the GSMC Football Podcast, brought to you by the GSMC Podcast Network. I am your host, as always, Jeff Malinoff, and with me, as always, is Mark Souza. We have the AFC and NFC Divisional Round Playoffs to talk about. We'll start with the AFC, end with the NFC, and then talk about the matchups, uh, and then also talk about Hugh Jackson being fired again, so twice in the same year, by two teams from Ohio, which I think is kind of, like, fitting, almost. Maybe not fitting, but... What's the word? Irony? Coincidence? Yeah. Yeah, something like that. Anyways, let's get right into it. The first AFC divisional round matchup we saw this weekend was the Chiefs and the Colts. But who knows if the Colts showed up? I didn't see them there. Did you? Uh, they camouflaged in with the snow, I think, with their white uniforms. So I don't right. know if anyone well, really saw the them. The final score was 31-13, to 13, all Chiefs, all day. Andrew Luck had 203 yards with one touchdown. Marlon Mack coming off of 148 rushing yards. Rush for only 46 yards this game. As well as for Mahomes, he threw for 270 yards. Did not throw a touchdown, though. But there were four rushing touchdowns by four different players for the Kansas City Chiefs. Including and one of them, Mahomes. well, I was about to say, one of them was Patrick Mahomes. Mm-hmm. The other, the, the Williams brothers, well, not really, but you know what I mean. And Tyreek Hill. Tyreek Hill had that 36 yard run for a touchdown, which yep. really kind of, that was his only rush of the game, but it was, it mattered. Uh, Travis Kelsey, though, had seven receptions for 108 yards, which is pretty impressive. But bottom line is, the Chiefs dominated this game at Arrowhead, and the Colts, who were coming off. Another momentum win against the Texans where they kind of dominated that game. Uh, They usually dominate from their offensive line to the rest of the team, but the offensive line did not dominate. No, the offensive line struggled mightily against a Chiefs defensive line that most would consider that a very good matchup for the Colts. Yeah. Or, yeah, excuse me. Yeah, yeah, you're right. And uh, it certainly was not. I, I was impressed by. Not only the Chiefs' defensive line ability to get to Andrew Luck because they did sack him numerous times. They did uh, bat the ball away a ton of times. I don't know how many times Luck got a pass bat at the line of scrimmage, but they just dominated a stout, maybe the best offensive line in football, and I was shocked to see that. And you have to give the Chiefs their defense a ton of credit because they came ready to play this game. We talked about that there was their major flaw was their defense. Yeah, we and saw they Marlon Mack proved us wrong. We saw Marlon Mack and that offensive line dominate a tough uh Houston defense yeah. last week. So we thought, yeah, we thought What did Mack have last week? 148 yards 148 rushing. 148 yards. Isn't then, that something? And then yesterday he has 9 carries for 46. Talk about a drop. I mean, he did average five yards a carry, but it was it just felt nine like... nine attempts is nothing. Yeah, it just felt like they were in such a big hole early. They couldn't they couldn't just keep running the ball. Yeah, I mean, we saw the Colts. They couldn't even get a first down. They got they didn't get a first down in the first half until the last drive, I believe, the no huddle drive, right before halftime. They had more blocked punts in the first half <laughs> than they had first downs until the last drive of the yes, first half. Yes, this is true, and. They could have scored another three points to make it 10 to, what was it, 24? 24. 24. Mahomes rushing touchdown with a minute 40 left in the first half Honestly, made it 24 Honestly, I felt seven. like I jinxed Vinatieri because I was talking to my dad while watching this, and I was like, if anyone's going to make this field, if I, if I had to trust anyone to make a field goal in playoff time, it was going to be Adam Vinatieri. 
and he made the first field goal, so, so or made the first extra point or whatever. And I was like, yeah, 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 okay, good. And then he shanked this one, and I was like, I totally jinxed him. That was all. I'm sorry, Adam. That was all on me. We both picked the Colts to win this game, and I'll be honest with you. When I picked the Colts to win by three, my thinking was Mentary. they're going to win because they'll have an edge in the kicking game when it matters the most. Either they'll kick one to win or they'll be the beneficiary of a missed field goal to win. And it was Vinatieri who missed not only a 23-yard field goal, he missed a point after attempt two. So he missed two kicks yesterday. The shortest kick he's ever missed, by the way, was yesterday's field goal, 23 yards. Unreal. And I Pretty thought, bad, huh? I'm not going to lie, I was thinking, cool, they have this drive where they move the ball down the field, no huddle. Finally, we get to see no huddle offense from it the It was Colts. a chip shot for Adam. For and I, I had been watching the game begging them in the first half to get a no huddle going because I'm like, you can't just keep three plays, punt, three plays, punt. Like, do something different. Like, change it up, no huddle offense. And they finally had some success, and I'm thinking, okay, they're not going to get a touchdown here, but that's a nice little you gotta drive. you got to get points on the board. Yeah, it's a nice little drive. You get some momentum going in a half. You go with a long drive, success, get three points, and then it was such a deflating moment. Like, how do you miss that field goal after oh. driving down the field? You finally that drive had, down the field. That had to break some hearts in Indianapolis for sure. I know you were probably thinking, like, when they blocked that punt for a touchdown, that the Colts, that, like, Andy Reid, like, the meltdown was going to happen, right? Yeah. Like I was the like, Andy oh, Reid meltdown, like, here it any goes. Any second now. Still waiting, and I'm still waiting. <laughs> because that I don't think it's going to happen. Too, the blocked punt was like, I think everybody who was watching that game was like, well, if the Colts come back and win this game, that was the turning point. You yeah. Know? Like, that well, was when, the first thing. When they thing. blocked the kick, I'm like, oh, wow. I, I when Once the punter got the ball he took his sweet old time trying to kick that i was like he's gonna block this. he's gonna they're gonna block this and i was like okay here's the momentum shift here's where the colts come back and that never happened either <laughs> bless yeah. you sir mm, thank you yeah no you're right um the colts had nothing up until that point they blocked the punt they i thought like, that was, okay. i thought that was like that's when this game changes right here right now but how wrong we were I can't believe that Andrew Luck was under that much duress for most of the game. I just – yeah, the Chiefs have some underrated pass it, rushers. It was like I get the, it, but it was like this was offensive crazy. line went back to two years ago where they were basically turnstiles. Yeah. Um, disappointing game for the Colts. Absolutely. You know, we talked about it before. They came into the game. Maybe Hottest the team best in team in football, like playing wise, like because they had won. Well, yeah, they had won at least momentum ten wise out of eleven games. They yeah. had won ten out of eleven games. Yeah, they had been beating everybody. They shut out the Cowboys a couple weeks ago. They dominated the Texans last week. You're thinking? I mean, we both picked them to win. We thought we both thought it would be a really good game, regardless. Yeah, because we thought these teams were pretty evenly matched, and it was all going to come down to the final play of some kind. But, man, we're really disappointed. You got to give Andy Reid a lot of credit, though. Um, I know we're we're both waiting for Andy Reid to, you know, lose because that's what happens yeah, in the it's, playoffs. It's almost like we're, it's, it's almost the inevitable. But, but that know, team came out ready to play. They you know, didn't take the first quarter to get into the swing of things after a bye week because we know sometimes a bye week can affect the rhythm and the timing for teams. They came out hot. They scored on their first three possessions. They looked good. They were more than ready to play. And Andy Reid, that offense and that defense were better coached than the Colts. They came out with a better game plan, obviously, than what the Colts were ready for. And you've got to give the head coach, Andy Reid, all the credit in the world. Yeah, I something's been changing with him. It might be Mahomes. It might be just he's sick and tired of losing so close to the Super Bowl and sometimes at one time at the Super Bowl. But... Maybe it's this team is the real deal. Then we first maybe their defense is getting a lot better. Maybe they're stepping up to the plate, helping out that offense. Maybe this is what we're going to see in, against the Patriots, and maybe this is going to take them to the Super Bowl. And the Colts' defense has been playing very well, and they it, had the all day the leading tackler in the NFL, and he and was a rookie. Didn't, it didn't matter for the Chiefs. The Chiefs' offense looked like they were just playing another team. Yeah, the Mahomes, even though he threw no touchdowns manage this game to perfection mm -hmm. and showing what he's capable of 
he might be the next elite quarterback in the NFL. Like, well, this might not I think be a one hit. He's probably going to bag his first MVP, and he's what, like twenty four years old. So and this is his first full season as a starter. Yeah, and everyone I think it's safe and, to say he's here. Like he's arrived, right? Yeah, but I I know some people are going to say, oh, it's his first season. Just let's wait until a couple of seasons later. And I understand that, but it's hard to deny his his potential. It's mm-hmm. off the charts. So, which game would you like to go to? You want to stay in the AFC? Let's stay in the AFC. We All got right. the Patriots and the Chargers. And, again, a team doesn't show up to play, and that's the Chargers not showing up against the Patriots as the Patriots dominated this game, like kind of like how Kansas City dominated the Colts. Yes. I would say I know the final score is only a 13-point win, but this 41 is easily the to biggest 28. win. Those, those last 14 points by San, I almost said it, Los Angeles were garbage, garbage points. Yes. It was 41 to, tw- uh, let's see, 14. So it was 41-14. Mm-hmm. That game's over. That game was over. First half. Not even. Tom Brady and his methodical play just again. Just in the first quarter, death by a million paper cuts. Yeah, but in the first quarter, Keenan Allen scored that touchdown where he just juked Stephon Gilmore out of his shoes. I was like, okay, we got a game here. I was all psyched and ready to go. And then they, then the Patriots just kept scoring and scoring and scoring, and the Chargers kept going three and out, three and out, three and out. And Mah- or, uh, Rivers was rushed almost every single play. Yep, another team. Another game that I felt like you could tell how well one team was coached and how undercoached the other team was. I mean, mm-hmm. I think the Chargers were very naive in this game. I think they were a little too cocky heading this game. I do agree. Very naive. They just beat Baltimore with a game plan that worked against Baltimore. Credit to them. But they were not playing Lamar Jackson this week, and they acted like they were. Seven DBs in the game. They thought they could beat them with the same type of defense. So what did the Patriots Brady, do? Brady chews up zone D for breakfast. Yep. And what did, what did the Patriots do? They just ran the ball straight at him until they changed. And the Chargers really didn't change. They just kept eating those runs, eating those runs. Five, six, seven, eight yards of carry. The Patriots just beat them in a submission, I felt like. Yeah. It was just a domination. I totally agree with what you meant by a thousand paper cuts, death by a thousand paper cuts, because they don't throw the ball deep. They don't score on these 80-yard plays. They score on two-yard plays and four-yard plays and then eight-yard plays, and then it goes to six-yard plays, and then it goes to eight-yard Tom plays. Tom Brady again. is just – he just kills everybody in the short passing game. Like, he just – five yards, second and five. Okay, we'll get five. Oh, it's third and three. We got four yards. That's just – how they operate. Look at James White. Perfect example. 15 catches for, what, 90 yards or something? Yes. 15 catches for a running back alone. How do you have 15 catches and not get 100 yards? Because you're the Patriots and you just get four, five, six, four, five, six. Just chew them up every play. Boom, boom, boom. They first, don't need to throw first, the ball uh, deep. The first drive, James White had like five catches. And the first drive was like <laughs> 15 minutes. The Almost the entire quarter. It was, I think, what, 12 minutes? Uh, first one like nine. It was something long. It was a long drive. I there, think there was only seven there were minutes. Three left. touchdowns scored in there, the first. There was quarter. only seven minutes left in the first quarter. Yeah. By the time they scored the seven first minutes, one, seven so, minute drive. Yeah, which is for the first drive absurdly long. Mm-hmm. And that's like end of the game wasting clock type of thing. But they were not wasting clock. They were using the clock to perfection. If yep. anyone knows how to manage a game and manage the time, a to- the clock. Belichick and Brady are the perfect two to manage a clock and work with it. Yep. It's absurd. And um, I know you in particular, you thought the Chargers were going to win this game big. Yeah. I was wrong. I admit my mistakes. I thought the Patriots weren't as good as they used to be. I think everyone thinks that, to be honest with you. And then Tom Brady said after the game, everybody thinks we suck. (laughs) Which is funny because it's kind of true. Like everybody yeah, everyone, is down on. Them. Oh yeah, everyone is looking like this team is bad. Because I mean, I mean, honestly, like because the same. You, the same. You sure. talked about it, and I and I didn't say I didn't agree with you, but I said yes. They're like more mundane than they used to be. They're more boring. They're more methodical, and yeah, they don't really have that big playability like they've had before. 
But that's kind of why everybody's like, oh, they're going to get beat this year. They're going to get beat this year. They're not the same. They're the, not this the same. seemed like the beginning of the end of the dynasty, and yet the dynasty is still alive and well. This so. is the longest dynasty I believe I've ever seen in person. 18 yeah. years? It's hard, to, it's hard to doubt the Patriots, right? 18 years of contending. 18 years of dominance. 18 years of eight Super Bowl appearances? I think it's – is it eight or nine? Half – okay, half. Half of our li- of the 18 years they've been in the Super Bowl. And five of those times they've won. So what? how, how can you stop that? The AFC's only had like four Super Bowl representatives in like the last 20 years, right? And who has been in there more the than... The Patriots Obviously. It's mm-hmm. either the Patriots, the Steelers, the Ravens, or I believe... You can't... Uh, you cannot doubt Tom Brady wait, wait, at home... Wait, let me think about in this. In the playoffs. The Patriots... Oh, the Raiders, because in O two they were in it. So the Patriots, the Raiders, the Steelers, the Steelers and the Ravens were all the Colts. S- the Colts. So five in the I last know. eighteen it, years. Yeah, it's like five in the last eighteen, something like that. That's mm-hmm. it, though. That's it. Eighteen years, only five. And how many for the NFC? I probably like fifth. I would say ten. So this this win by the Patriots sets up the rematch of that epic game earlier in the season. Between the Patriots and the Chiefs, where the Chief, the Chiefs lost, but I felt like at the time it was like a good, like Mahomes. I thought learned a lot that game, mm-hmm. so it's going to be very interesting. It is interesting that we're seeing two rematches in from and earlier these, games, yeah. earlier yeah. good games, good yes. games. They were entertaining games for sure. But do you think that the AFC and NFC championship games? will live up to the hype because some of these playoff games have just I don't not. I don't know anymore dude I honestly have no idea I can't predict anything I don't trust myself I don't trust these games there's well we thought about these games going into the playoffs we're like man this playoff this is wide open but really they've been kind of boring games you know what's funny hmm? remember uh before the playoffs started we're like oh my god any of these teams can win the Super Bowl. The five, the six seeds, and what How do we have in the what do we have in the championship the one games? One and two, one and two. Yeah, just killed the theory, huh? Yes. But we will take a quick short break. When we get back, we'll talk about the NFC divisional round matchups, and those were not one was interesting. One was again the same as the other two AFC divisional games. But we will talk about this when we return. Are you looking for help for your fantasy football team? Check out the GSMC Fantasy Football Podcast. Get today's best advice on who to start, who to sit, even who you should draft. From sleeper picks to red-hot lineups, they got it all covered for you. That's gsmcpodcast.com backslash fantasy-football-podcast. We'll cover traditional leagues, dynasty, PPR, even IDP leagues. When you need fantasy help, there's just one show to hit up. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow Follow them on Twitter. Visit gsmcpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast. We just finished talking about the AFC Divisional Round matchups. Now let's get on to the NFC Divisional Round matchups. Mm-hmm. Which one do you want to go first? The first one? The Cowboys-Rams. Early- Rams. Cowboys-Rams it is. And the Rams beat the Cowboys 30-22. Uh, to 22, How but about it- them, Cowboys? But... Honestly, the score wasn't that close compared to... Uh, the score doesn't do it justice how close this game was. It was not that close. Uh, nope. You know, Cowboys scored touchdown, made it somewhat interesting, and then uh, Rams just sealed the deal, uh, yeah. getting a first down running the ball because why wouldn't they get the first down running the ball since they had been doing it all game? Yeah. It was uh, not what we expected. 273 yards on the ground on 48 carries for the Rams 
they beat that Cowboys front seven to a pulp. I mean, let's be real. That Cowboys front seven, very vaunted, stout part of their defense. We thought going in, it would be Elliott that would have the big game for the Cowboys against the Rams rushing defense. No. And not only Gurley, but C.J. Anderson. C.J. Anderson, 23 for 123. Gurley, 16 for 115. Both of them were doing it. Uh, Yeah. it, It was just... A master class by Sean McVay, in my opinion. Like, he showed the NFL why everybody wants their next Sean McVay. Everybody wants the next Sean McVay, right? Oh, yeah. We saw it with the hires for the coaches. He, he is we saw two, what everyone wants. Two of his disciples got picked up to be head coaches. And now, a guy like Cliff Kingsbury. Disciples he, sounds like he's in a cult. He, I know what you mean, though. Cliff Kingsbury gets hired. Basically because some people think he's the next Sean McVay. Like, it's still because of McVay, even though they don't have ties to each other. It's like, Mm -hmm. who's this young offensive mind? They're looking for young guys. Yeah. Yeah, this guy, Coach Patrick Mahomes. You know, all that. So, Um, I was... I was disappointed in how the Cowboys lost, but I, I knew that... I figured they were going to lose this game just because I didn't think they had the firepower to play in a in a high scoring game and ultimately they needed to outscore the Rams. They needed to score in the thirties to win this game. I didn't think they could do it. Um, yeah. So what were your initial thoughts watching the game or at the end of the game? Uh, I think that well, obviously in my opinion, the better team won. I had them winning and the fact is they, they just dominated I don't know know how to explain this. They showed why they were a a top seed in the NFC. They showed why they're Super Bowl contenders. And we were having our doubts with Jared Goff going into that game. We were saying that on Fantasy Football Podcast as well as the Football Podcast. But he showed that he is the man for this team. He is that franchise quarterback. Todd Gurley and CJ Anderson both dominated on the running game. There seems to be no flaws in this team right now that I can see. Yeah. We'll see. Everyone's clicking. I still think their secondary is not that great. Even with the keep to leave, Marcus Peters is, eh, we saw them talking a lot of trash this game, but Amari Cooper scored that touchdown early. And I thought, okay, uh, that was a big score for the Cowboys. And then they held the Rams to another field goal. So early on, they held the Rams to two field goals and scored a touchdown thing. Okay. This is going well for Dallas. Uh, you gave up yards, but when it came down to it, you gave up three instead of six. That's big time. We all know in football how big that is. If your defense can give up field goals and not touchdowns, you'll win most of the time. But eventually those drives turned into points uh, in the end zone rather than just field goals. Uh, C.J. Anderson, I mean, he scored twice in this game. <laughs> if somebody yeah. would have told you that before the game, you would have called him crazy, right? If anyone said he was going to be on a roll going into this NFC title game, they would say, what What are you smoking? I am a little concerned, though, because Todd Gurley has missed three weeks. He hasn't played football in three weeks, and he still wasn't healthy, which makes me wonder about their game next week against the Saints that we'll preview later on. But it does leave me concerned because they need a healthy Todd Gurley to win that game. They're not going to be able to do it with C.J. Anderson. Mm-hmm. Uh, and we saw earlier in the year the Rams – they lost to Drew Brees in the Superdome, and they had a healthy Todd Gurley then. So and they that definitely ended in their a no streak they had. Yeah, that was their first. That was their first loss of the season. And for me, I mean, you know, I thought Dak Prescott was okay. I didn't think he was great, but you got to be great to win these games. You do. It's hard to go on the road in the playoffs and play a team with that high power of an offense i mean you look at the other side if you just look at the numbers prescott had a bigger game than Goff because the rams ran for 278 yards where Goff only had to throw the ball 186 yards that's it he only threw the ball 28 times period where prescott threw for 266 but they were behind most of the game and of course they couldn't run the ball Ezekiel only had 47 yards rushing on 20 carries that is super low for him that is that is 20 carries is even kind of low. 
And 47 yards is just absurdly low. Like, C.J. Anderson had three more carries than Elliott and almost had three times as many yards. Um, yeah, the Cowboys... Uh, the Cowboys' defense is very good, and their linebacking unit is one of the best. But, man, that linebacking unit had a tough day at it the office. It got broken this game against the Rams, tough for day at sure. The office, for yeah, sure. absolutely. This this showed they were outclassed in a, a basically every position. Cowboys have some decisions to make, and we'll talk about them later on in segment three as we talk about some of the eliminated teams and like where they go from here. But this is a big offseason for them. Yeah, absolutely. And uh, the next game on mm-hmm. the divisional round list is Saints and Eagles. Eagles were actually winning this game 14 to nothing. Yeah, they jumped out to a big week. And the Saints scored 20 unanswered and won the game 20-14. The, the Eagles were flying early, you could say. And then they got shot down. Yep. Um, that's a depressing thought. Well, it's Image. a fact. Drew Brees... And Michael Thomas had it rolling yesterday. That's my what I came away from that game thinking. Like, first off, Alshon Jeffrey, that was, a feel for the guy. That He's was been the, a big time performer for them. That was the one play that stuck in my mind the most of that game. Alshon Jeffrey dropping the ball. The ball lands directly into Marshall Lattimore's hands. It ends the game. Ends a chance at the Eagles defending their title. They lose on that play. It's a tough way to go, but man, like he had that in his hands. He did, That's, and ugh. he was pretty sad after the game. Like you got to feel for the guy. Oh yeah, I really hope Eagles fans don't do what they did, to, what Bears fans did to Cody Parkey for that. I'm pretty sure they're not, because Alshon Jeffrey was a big part of why they won the Super Bowl last and year, and that is why I think they're going to give him a pass. That he'll drop, get it. Um, oh my god. Leave the man alone. You, you like, threw that alley up. Right Leave him alone. What was I supposed to do? He's not, only human. You threw an alley a perfect alley Was I not supposed to dunk it? I <laughs> wasn't even thinking about it, but then I realized it was a no-look pass. So, this this was the one game where it came down to a drive at the end to win or lose. Like it, The other games didn't come down to that at all. Mm-hmm. None of them. Yeah. All three of the other games were the Cowboys had a – they needed an onside kick, and then – they needed a stop. They couldn't get they it. They never like had the ball to tie. Unanswered. They needed like 30 unanswered points. Yeah, so this game was, you got to give it credit, it was far lower scoring than I ever imagined, to be honest 20 with you. Yeah, absolutely. Nick Foles was hot early, but, man, that offense just sputtered in the second half. I mean, I think he had 140 yards at halftime. He finished with 201, nothing yeah. in the second half. Obviously, they struggled in the second half. I think maybe they took the fourth. The he also had another pick, too. Other than the drop, he threw that other interception as well. Um, Not the best game for Foles. Not the best game for that offense. They couldn't run the ball very well. 16 carries for 49 Not yards. Not the best game for anyone. Um, yeah, Ertz had five for 50, Jeffrey five for 63. When it's funny, cause this game was way closer on the scoreboard. When you look at the stats, look at this breeze, 301 passing yards, two touchdowns, one pick 28 to 38 Kamara at 16 for 71. The, the saints as a team ran for 137 on 31. So they actually ran the ball to good rate. They passed the ball to good rate. Yet they only won by six, and they could have easily lost this football game. All, all it needed was one more drive. And that, that drive looked like it might have happened if Alshon Jeffrey can get his hands on the ball and not turn it yeah. over there. Well, it didn't. He lost the ball, interception. Saints move on to the NFC title game to face the Rams. And like we said, it was a rematch. It's a rematch of week, was it 10? Week uh, 9 or 10? Week 9. 45-35, Saints win? Yes, 10, and that ended. That was, they were 8-0 at the time the Rams were. And, and I was, feel like, I know exactly where I was when I watched the game. I feel like that was the first classic game of the season this year. Because then it, it was then, before then the, the Rams Chiefs. And the Chiefs yeah, yeah that, before, was, that was the game of the year, right? Actually, I take that back. The first, the first game between the Chiefs and the Patriots was like week six, wasn't it? Chiefs yeah, Patriots. Maybe. That was an epic game, 43-40 to 40, that the and Chiefs lost. And now we lost. got the rematch. Can you so, believe the Chiefs lost two games this year where they scored one where they scored over 40 and one where they scored over 50? <laughs> <laughs> well, that's why we said our, their defense was questionable. Defense wins championships, but we'll see. offenses also win championships too. But, yes, those are the two <laughs> AFC games, I believe. Or oh, NFC, NFC. games. NFC, excuse me. But we're going to take another break. When we get back, we'll talk about the teams that have been eliminated 
and we'll talk about where they go from here, how they'll do next season. We'll be right back right after this. Check out the show that's built on the MMA. From the UFC to extreme cage fighting, they got the fights covered. Check out the GSMC MMA podcast. Get the latest news on past or upcoming fights. Join us as we talk to and about some of the biggest names in the MMA, past, present, and future. When it's the fight game, there's just one show to check out. GSMCpodcast.com backslash MMA dash podcast. Don't forget to like them on Facebook and follow them on Twitter. Visit G. SMCpodcast.com for more info. Welcome back, everyone, to the GSMC Football Podcast. We just finished talking about the NFC and AFC Divisional Round Playoffs. Now let's talk about the teams that are not in the championship games this week. Want to start with the wildcard teams that lost? Uh, We should just probably talk about the four that lost yesterday. You don't want to talk about Texans or the... Uh... Well, I think we should just talk about the four because that'll take up a lot of time. I don't know if we have... Unless you want to talk about eight teams. I mean, we can do briefly. I mean, do we need it? Would you want to go into detail? No, let's just talk about the teams that lost yesterday or this weekend. Colts. Okay. I Great mean, season. $120 million in cap space. That's the one thing that you got to say right off the yeah. bat. The team and, can add whoever they want in the offseason. And then some. Yep. And with this offensive line that can be only getting better, Frank Wright can only get better as a head coach. This was his first season. locked up already. Yeah. They and, have a lot of places they can go with that money all you need to do well they need if they add to their secondary get another receiver to compliment ty hilton and you already got marlon mack this team can definitely be a super bowl contender next season yeah i think for them i think they're the next step in their progression yeah it would be nice to get a compliment to hilton obviously antonio brown's going to be a name that they're i guarantee you you're going to hear colts and antonio brown a lot because they do have the money. Mm-hmm. They do have the assets. And with all that money and assets, they will they could be the team that can, I don't know, offer the best package for Antonio Brown. But also, when I watched them play yesterday, I don't think that – I think what they could really use is, A, a defensive back, like a, a shutdown corner. They don't really need linebackers, in my opinion, but they do. They could use a pass rusher. So if one of those pass rushers, like Demarcus Lawrence, if he hits the market, I don't think he will. But if any one of these guys doesn't get franchise tagged or gets a long-term deal and hits free agency, the Colts have to be a team that would be most interested in getting an impact player like that. Yeah, definitely. And the thing is, like you said, $120 million in cap space. That is the most crucial thing about this whole thing. Mm-hmm. They need to nail this off season. They will never have an opportunity like this again. I don't believe. It's not often that you have a franchise quarterback locked up and that much money and that good of a young team. They really hit home runs in the draft last year. Quentin Nelson, Darius Leonard, both are all pros in their rookie year. First home team runs. all pros. Home runs like those are home runs. One of them was the leading tackler in the NFL. Yeah, that's a that's saying huge dividends. And if their front office, I got a question. If they don't, if they do very quiet, and I, I highly doubt it, but it's possible that they don't land the guys we're talking about. They don't land a big name or a big uh, key player in the off season. Will you say that's a big hit on their regular season hopes or their Super Bowl hopes? That is. Uh, I mean, I don't think they have to go crazy. But it would just be really nice for them to get some big players. But, like, no, they don't have to. I mean, they could still – what if they draft, like, a, a D end or something like that in the first round and then they sign, like, a pretty decent receiver in free agency? 
then I think they could even be better. We have to remember the Colts were one of the best teams at the second half of the season. They've lost like one game in the last 10 oh, weeks. add two. Add one more equal two. Mm-hmm. Math, everybody. So, uh, yeah, I really like what the Colts are doing. I would say of all the teams that lost in the playoffs, they have the best chance of even getting a lot better next year. Yeah. Not just it, maintaining, but getting better. It was not too long ago that we were using this team as the butt of all jokes. Mm-hmm. Now they're the face. The face? Of the joke, I guess. Mm-hmm. Like they're on the opposite side of the butt. <laughs> Got it. Yeah. <laughs> that that makes <laughs> sense, right? Yep. Good. Uh, who are next? We should do NFC team. Let's, Let's do, do Cowboys. Cowboys. They got in very – I think they got lucky because if Alex Smith doesn't break his leg in every single place imaginable and the Redskins keep continuing to play how they were playing, they would have been in the playoffs and NFC East champions rather than Dallas being the NFC East Cowboys champions. have some interesting decisions to make because as it stands right now, they have – $50 million in cap space. The problem is they have a n- number of players that are on the last year of their deal. Dak Prescott, Ezekiel Elliott, and Amari Cooper. All three will go into this offseason on the last year of their deal. So you have to figure. And well, There was even reports yesterday before the game, or before, sorry, Saturday before the game, that Ezekiel Elliott's agent, was already pushing the Cowboys to have an extension this offseason to get him paid now, which I think sounds likely to happen. Mm-hmm. You got to think with Amari Cooper, Ezekiel Elliott, and, and Dak Prescott, if they were to sign, re-sign all three of those players, that's probably going to eat up about seventy to $75 million a season. It's, it's going to hurt for sure. It's going to hurt the wall. So they can't really go crazy this offseason because so do they have to the, do everything with that in mind that they still need to spend a ton of money. I wouldn't be surprised if they used all their money to keep their guys this year to free up maybe a little okay. bit next year. If they wanted, if they had to get rid of one player, Cooper, I guess I know the answer to this, Cooper, Dak, or Zeke, who would you I mean, up? I don't think they're going to give up any of them. I would be shocked if all three. I'll tell you right now, they're not giving up Cooper. They, they just gave gave up, up a first-round first round pick, and he yeah. balled out. He yeah. balled out. He did. Ezekiel Elliott, he's not hitting free agency. Mm-hmm. Dak Prescott, no matter what your feelings are, because there are more people divided on Prescott than any of the other three, including myself. I don't think that Dak Prescott's necessarily the greatest quarterback. The problem is, is that Jerry Jones does, and there's no way that they're going to go into an offseason without him signed because quarterbacks just don't hit the market like that. Even if yeah. you don't think he's that great, quarterbacks that are decent just don't hit the market. There is a lot of caution around this area because if you keep these three guys, you're not going to have a lot of money for offseason. you are got to build a team around they these They got three. $50 million again this year, and they're projected at $100 million the year after. But, again, that's not taking into account the three players that need to sign. So they're not going to have much money. I would be – I think what we'll see this offseason is that the two or all three of those – players that we named will get extensions i think we'll see sean lee get cut because he is 10 million dollars on the cap but if they cut him they can save 10 million or 7 million they'll only be on the hook for three so they can save 7 million there they already have leighton vander esch who are who balled out it looks like sean lee's replacement sean lee's hurt all the time he just can't be relied upon so i think they'll cut bait with him and then mm-hmm. from there it's like what do you do with the extra money Cowboys could definitely use um, a tight end. I mean, on offense, someone else to give Dak another option. They got Cooper. Michael Gallup looks like he's a decent player. He had over 100 yards on Saturday, the rookie from Colorado. Um, On the defensive side of the ball, I think their safeties, a guy like Earl Thomas. We already already know they've been linked to him. Earl Thomas is going to be a guy that's at the top of their list. I just don't know if they can afford him. Yeah, it's... This is just a uh, tricky situation, definitely. For also, the something to remember, uh, Demarcus Lawrence is a free agent this year. <laughs> That's All rumors damn. point to him getting franchise tagged. So if you but have, they'll have to do something about it next season. You've got to add other... Demarcus Lawrence, Ezekiel Elliott, Dak Prescott, and when, Mark when, Wouldn't a free agent, would a franchise tag be a serious problem? Because then you have four guys expiring contracts that are crucial to your team. 
it's going to be very interesting off season for the Cowboys. I don't. Think, I don't think they can keep all four. It doesn't look like it. With they, just, they with could, just fifty million, they could, but they are they're going to have to be creative, and they're really going to be so putting so, pressure. Someone's getting lowballed, but they're going to be pressure. They're going to put a lot of pressure on their drafting the next couple of years because they won't be able to have flexibility in free agency at all. So, but they have a good. They got those are all young players, right? Yeah, yeah, they're true. all like twenty five, twenty six. Like they're. Well, they're, they're building something. Their rookie good. contracts were bound to expire sooner or later, and fortunately for this time, it's they're hitting that min- midnight switch. You know what I mean? So why don't we move on to? You want to go Chargers or yes. Eagles? Yes, right. Chargers. I think in the AFC, I can see easily Colts Chargers AFC title game next season. Still sleeping on the Patriots, huh? <laughs> Wait, what? Uh, no, what, I you, understand. You can't see these two in the AFC title game. Yeah, I mean, problem is that the Chargers have twenty five million of cap space. They don't have any money, but they have a team still. I don't think they have losing anyone crucial this off season. That, not to my knowledge, at least. Mm-hmm. So, this may be this next season maybe their last hope before they need to do some serious uh, changing. These are the players that they have. So they have twenty five million. These are the players that are on that are leaving, who are contracts are expiring. Brandon Meebane, Tyrell Williams, Antonio Gates, Jason Verrett, Adrian Phillips, Denzel Perryman, um, Geno Smith, Kyle Emanuel. Not a whole lot of big name players. They have their core locked up. They don't have any player. Adrian Phillips, maybe one or two starters here that are hitting free agency, but ultimately, like you mentioned, they have a really good team and they're all under contract. Pretty much. Yes. They can retain pretty much the most of their team from what we've seen. It's it's a nice it's a nice The uh, problem is though I don't know. Um What's wrong? Talk to me. I feel like a lot of things went the Chargers way this year. So yes, they have a good thing going. Mm-hmm. But also Rivers may, might have had one of his best years. That was kind of weird. Like, do we think they're going to suffer the same fortunes next year? Are, are they going to benefit from, I don't know, the same health? Yeah, Melvin Gordon missed a few games, but he always does. But, like, Rivers was healthy. Most of that defense is pretty healthy. They missed some guys. They had some guys on IR, And Philip Rivers being healthy at his age is incredible. And just his ability to play that well. Yeah. They will get Hunter Henry back. They had a couple guys in IR they're getting back. I think they're obviously going to be a favorite to go back to the playoffs. They're going to be a team that's going to oh, have top 100%. 10. They'll have top 10 odds to win the Super Bowl in the offseason. It's, it's probably top eight. I think, obviously, the, the goal is like between the Chiefs and the Chargers, who's winning the NF- AFC West. The other thing, too, is that, Jeff, can this team – look at how good this team was on the road this year. I don't think they, they're going to do that again. And they really don't have a home field advantage. So it's hard to give them the benefit of the doubt when you're talking about, like, can they get over the hump? Can they win one or two more games? Like, sure, they can, but it's hard to do that when you don't have a home where you can dominate, right? Yeah, true. I guess the last thing we got to talk about, though, Eagles. They are going to have the most interesting offseason of the four teams, wouldn't you say? Yes, this is uh, a lot different than the last two we just talked about. Because we're talking about... Foles versus Wentz. Well, I think Foles will be. Isn't it weird that they can opt in to him, but he can buy himself out for two million? It's like a weird two billion. Thing. No, not billion. You said billion. I said million. You said billion. I did not. I you... I heard a B in there. Ch- that's fine. That's because you're not paying attention. That is a lie. Mm-hmm. Well, I okay, whatever. Anyways, they are twelve million under right now. They're in the red. They they're, have the worst cap scenario of any team. They are what you say in crisis mode. So even if they had the, I don't know, idea of keeping Nick Foles, that is 
shot down because they just don't have the money. They couldn't even sign him even if they didn't have Carson Wentz. They couldn't even keep him. That is insane. Like, this is not looking good for them in the long run, is it? They could cut Timmy Jernigan. He would save them $7 million. I guess they could cut they Alshon need, they Jeffrey. Need, they need a lot more than just seven million. They have a lot of players making way too much money. You know who is making nine million from them next year? Nelson Algalor. I can see why. He Golden did that. Tate is a free agent. He's not coming back. They could cut Michael Bennett. Uh, I I could see that. Yeah, there's just not a lot of options for them. So they got to make sacrifices, and these sacrifices are going to put a huge factor on the team. The team is very hamstrung when it comes to what they can and cannot do this year. Obviously, a guy like, um, no, you know what? You know who else is a free agent? Jay free agent. Well, he just lost, uh, he tore his ACL, so he might not be as big as a he factor. He won't be there. They, they can't pay for him. But he might be done. Like, I don't think anyone's going to pick him up. It's going to be extremely hard for the Eagles to do anything because, first off, they have to create about $20 million in cap space because they got to get you far enough under the cap that they can sign their their draft picks. Oh, so, geez, that's right. So they, they're they $12 million They over. are in trouble, aren't they? they got to create $20 million just to be able to sign the players they draft. That doesn't even factor in signing any free agents that can help the team win today. They're tough. They're stuck. I think the Eagles are going down before they come back up, to be yeah, honest with you. Yeah, they are in trouble. Like And they're not a young team. Let's look at not. their most expensive players. Lane Johnson, been around. Alshon Jeffrey, been around. Timmy Jernigan, been around. Ertz, been around. Brandon Brooks, Fletcher Cox, Malcolm Jenkins, Jason Peters, Rodney McLeod. Not a young team. They're not. You just named guys that are at the end of their careers. Yep, or middle or after. Like, if they all retired, like, next season, you'd be like, I can see that. Yeah, so. That's not good. They're stuck, man. And luckily they got a, a Super Bowl out of this run, right? Yeah. If they didn't, then this would be a huge waste of time. Anyways. I do uh, have to say one more thing. That if any of these teams are just going to be at the basement next season, if any of these playoff teams, it's the Eagles, hands down. Mm-hmm. Let's go to a break. Yes. We, we have a few news and notes. To we talk have about. an interesting firing to talk about. We have some other things to talk about. We'll see you right after this. Check out the show built around the women of MMA. From the UFC to the extreme cage fighting, we got the fights covered. Listen. It's the Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. The latest news of upcoming fights, discussions of previous matches. Join us as we talk to and about the biggest names in women's mixed martial arts. Past, present, and future. When it's the women's fight game, you know where to listen to. The Golden State Media Concepts Women's MMA Podcast. Welcome to the final segment of the GSMC Football Podcast. Let's just dig right into it. Hugh Jackson has been fired from the Cincinnati Bengals. That's his second firing in the same season. I guess you would call it the same season, right? Yeah. And the question I need to ask you is, will we see him in the NFL again? Uh, possibly. I think so. Somebody, will, I think he'll be a quarterback's coach or something like that. For someone, a quarterback's coach. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Do what he does best. Well, okay. The thing is, once he went to Cincinnati, did they win a game with him? Uh, they won one or two. They beat the Raiders for sure. 
I'm just saying there is a aura. I mean, he didn't. He didn't. Constantly I, I, lose. I know, but there's just this aura of losing about him that when he goes to a team, they just lose. I can't explain it, but he was he was 500 as Raiders coach, right? Eight and eight. Yeah, but like that's still not amazing. Right, but if he he was known as a good offensive mind or a good quarterbacks coach, so. I think somewhere some somewhere down the road. Do you he'll think get a college will be the best place for him, or do you think it's still the NFL? That's interesting because college is a different. Uh, it's a different style. It takes a different personality. You have to be. You have to really love recruiting. You got to want to right. do this job for twelve months a year if you're in college. You want to guess his head coaching record? His head coaching record overall is like. 12 and 55 or something you're actually kind of close 11 44 and 1 <laughs> 205 oh yeah he did have a tie i should have got that in the one right i should yeah in a batting average chance that's 205 which is pitiful it's over the mendoza line <laughs> wow that's a that's a shot at mendoza definitely that's mean <sighs> uh well but here he started his uh coaching career in 1987 at Pacific, he was a graduate assistant. UOP, that's just down the road. I uh, there's like tons. I don't know. There are multiple colleges called Pacific. You well, there's only one UOP. University of Pacific is only one of those. Oh well, this is Pacific Tigers. I'm not sure if that's yep. This. Yep. Okay then. That's uh, Stockton, California, right there. Then Cal State Fullerton. Mm-hmm. Then the London Monarchs. I don't know. So what. he was. Oh, in NFL Europe. Europe. I was really confused for a second. Then he was at Arizona State, which is my enemy because I'm from Arizona. Go Wildcats. Then Sun he was Devils like, are cooler, though. No, they're they not. They got a cooler mascot. Yeah, but the, it's a stupid looking one. No, uh, it's the Sun Devil. Shut up. Uh, He's got a pitch for I'm not right? going to listen to you. Uh, <laughs> California. Then he was at USC. He was the offensive coordinator yep. at USC. Mm-hmm. For three years, which is insane. Maybe he'll go back. Then maybe USC actually they be, need they need one. Clay Helen's getting fired this year, but write that down. But wasn't Kingsley Kingsbury was Kingsbury USC. was USC offensive coordinator? They have an opening. He was yes. Hugh Jackson might be the U. I'm calling it right now. There is a I'm going to say eighty percent chance Hugh Jackson will be the new offensive coordinator for the USC Trojans. I could see it. And then his NFL career goes as follows. Washington Redskins, running backs coach. And then 03, he was the offensive coordinator. Then Cincinnati, he was the receiving coach. Then he went to Atlanta for OC Then in 07. So that was the Bobby Petrino era? Sounds right. Oh, jeez. Then Baltimore. Bobby Petrino, your favorite guy. He's the worst. (laughs) Uh, Baltimore Ravens quarterback coach in 08 to 09. Then he was the Oakland Raiders OC in 2010. Then he was the, his first head coaching job was in 2011, Raiders. Oakland Raiders. Then he traded for Carson Palmer. <laughs> I forgot about that. He's the one who did it. <laughs> yes, he did. And then he goes back, ironically, to Cincinnati, secondary assistant and special teams coach, basically what he was just now. Mm-hmm. Then he was the running back coach. Then he was the OC. Then he was the head coach of Cleveland. We all know what happened there. Then he was... Special assistant to the head coach, regional, regional manager. manager. <laughs> and now he's done. So I guess we'll see what this saga happen goes for uh, for Hugh. I got a question for you, though. Shoot. Have you seen the early betting lines for the NFC and AFC Championship game? No, I haven't. They're out. Do you have a guess? Let's start off in the NFC. The Rams and the Saints. Who do you think is favored and what do you think it is? Uh, I'll say the Saints are favored, and the line Saints is... Saints are favored. I'm going to say the line is two and a half. It's three and a half. Ooh, that was close. Yep. So we'll see if it moves up or down. Uh, all right, let's flip over to the Patriots Chiefs. Uh, I'll say Chiefs. And what do you think the line is? Two and a half. Three. Mm. Was I right on the Chiefs, though? Uh, yes. The home teams are both favored, yes. I kind of see that. Do you... Early... I'm not telling you, don't make a prediction yet. Don't blow your load on the first day, all right? Is Are you allowed to say that on air? What do you mean? Never mind. Continue. <laughs> the first thought of these games. They're going to be good. 
I really would think so. I know we've been disappointed over and over again, but this has to be good. This has to be good. Please. We need one what, good what, playoff game. What two teams do you think will be representing their conference in the Super Bowl? Chiefs. Well, you can, you're not. A, this isn't your prediction. Like you can change no matter what. But on first Monday, first reaction Monday morning, what do you say? I'm saying the Chiefs, and I'm saying the Rams. We have a little rematch. Interesting. Yeah, I I think I'd go opposite actually. Patriots, Saints? Yeah. Well, that's Breeze. my preseason prediction. My preseason prediction is Saints, Patriots. I am not changing now. I cannot. I've gotten this far. I have to go down with it, right? Yes. But let me ask you this. What is more interesting matchup? Goff versus Mahomes, two young quarterbacks, or Breeze versus Brady? Wait. Oh, you're talking about in the Super Bowl? Yeah. I mean, everybody wants to see Goff and Mahomes, right? And everyone wants to see Breeze and Brady, though. No, but I mean, like, nobody wants to see Breeze and... Or nobody wants to see Brady. <laughs> so, Breeze so, versus Mahomes, the two MVP candidates I think. At it. I think uh, if you just separate the NFC and AFC, everybody wants to see Mahomes over Brady. Like, not only is Mahomes different, but he's actually exciting. And it's not Brady. It's like the... He's young, exciting, mobile. He's everything that Brady isn't. So... But if we saw... Goff versus Mahomes, we would see two of the young, bright quarterbacks of of this generation going at it. Mm -hmm. And we would see, oh, wait, never mind. We wouldn't see Gurley versus Hunt. I was wrong. We would have yeah. if we didn't. Get I got a question for you. Have Shoot. you been following the Kyler Murray saga? Yes, I have. Sounds I want to like, talk about this. Sounds like He's his people are wanting $15 million from the Oakland Athletics to play baseball. If you're the A's and he says that to me, that sounds like an ultimatum. Yeah, if you're the A's and he says that, don't you just say go play base or go play football? Yeah, because that means your Up heart's yours. not into it. It really means your heart is into football, right? But you could be swayed by money. I just, I just rather him go do what he wants to do. Um. Yeah, absolutely. Anyways, anyways, that's our show. Yes. Join us tomorrow. We're yes. going to talk about. The new hires in the NFL, we have new some, OCs and DCs. Yeah, there's a, there's been some uh, moving and shaking in terms of coaching in the last uh, few days since our last show. So and, we'll talk about and that. And maybe we'll even preview where some free agents might go in the future. Mm -hmm. So we will see you tomorrow. Have a good Monday, everybody. You've been listening to the Golden State Media Concepts Football Podcast, part of the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network. You can find this show and others like it at www.gsmcpodcast.com. Download our podcast on iTunes, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Just type in GSMC to find all the shows from the Golden State Media Concepts Podcast Network from movies to to music, from sports, to entertainment, and even weird news. You can also follow us on Twitter and on Facebook. Thank you, and we hope you have enjoyed today's program.